If you're living with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis and you're in the middle of the flare, this video is for you. Eating during a flare can feel overwhelming and you're not sure what's safe and what might make symptoms worse or how to keep the strength up. In the next few minutes, I'll walk you through a clear, practical plan with respect to what to eat, what to avoid and why so you can manage your diet with much more confidence. If we haven't met, hello, I'm Dr. Ryan Choi. I'm also known as a gastrodoc. I'm a gastroenterologist based in one of the academic hospitals in Sydney, Australia, and I specialize in inflammatory bowel disease. So that is Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis and work with patients with these conditions every week who are going through flares. So this video gives you the same guidance I share in the clinic, but it is important to remember, this is a general information for general purposes only. And if you have a severe pain, high fever, heavy bleeding, or even you can't keep your fluids down, please make sure that you speak to your team or go to the emergency department. Now that said, let's move to the next part. So during a flare, your goals are threefold. First, reduce the inflammation to ease the diarrhea, cramping, and urgency. And secondly, maintain nutrition and hydration so your body can heal and you can keep your energy. And thirdly, avoiding unnecessary restriction so you don't slip into deficiencies or unwanted weight loss. There's no single inflammatory bowel disease flare diet that works for everyone. It is important to remember that triggers are different from person to person, and the safest approach is often to think about texture and tolerance first and ingredients really second. So when you're having a flare, step out to the gentler textures and then step back up as symptoms settle. So having said all this, so in practice, what foods should you really have? Let's look into this now. So what do you eat? Let's call this the low irritation foundations. Firstly, let's start with carbohydrates. During a flare, most people do better with carbs that are much easier to digest and low in fiber. These include things like white bread, white rice, and refined pasta that are well cooked, and potatoes without the skin. For fruits, choose the ripe bananas, or peeled apples, or ripe melon, or canned, even stewed fruit in a juice or light syrup. What about for vegetables? I'll go for the well cooked and soft options such as carrots and zucchini or green beans, and make sure to always remove the skins and seeds. These choices reduce the stool volume and scraping the intestine, which lowers the symptoms of urgency and cramping. And start with low portion and increase slowly as you can tolerate them. Now let's talk about fluids and electrolytes. This is especially important. During a flare, your appetite often drops a lot and you may drink less, while at the same time, diarrhea symptoms can cause a lot of fluid loss and salt losses at the same time. That combination is bad because it makes the dehydration very easy and dehydration can worsen fatigue, headaches and kidney stress and even make your gut symptoms a lot harder to control. Importantly, it also increases the risk of blood clots because inflammatory bowel disease already raises the clotting risk so you're more prone to have conditions like deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism which can be life-threatening and dehydration thickens the blood further increasing the risk further of developing these conditions so aim for at least eight cups or about two liters of fluids daily next the protein inflammation increases your protein needs and so aim for a portion with at least each meal Good options are tender and well-cooked chicken, and salmon and white fish, and sometimes lean mints as well. And the eggs are excellent, especially if you prepare them soft. And tofu and even lactose-free yogurts are also helpful as well. Smooth nut butters like peanut butter and almond butters, I like them because they also taste nice and kind to your gut at the same time. And protein certainly supports the repair and maintains your muscle and help with your satiety when your appetite is low. For quick snacks, try the crackers with peanut butter and yogurt cup and banana with nut butter. And if you have frequent loose stools, use an oral rehydration solution. And this is a special fluid with the right balance of water, salt and sugar to replace what you're losing from the diarrhea. Examples include hydrolytes, which you can from the over the counter or a simple homemade oral rehydration solution. Try to avoid alcohol, caffeine and fizzy drinks and sugar-free drinks with sorbitol or mannitol as these can make diarrhea, bloating and importantly abdominal discomfort worse. And keep the fats relatively light. Use the oils like olive or canola rather than solid fats and aim for less than 8 teaspoonfuls per day. Too much fat can slow your stomach emptying and worsen the cramping and urgency symptoms. And finally, calcium and vitamin D. Now this is important, here's why this matter. The steroids, such as prednisolone, which is often we use for treating flares, it can significantly weaken the bone strength if taken for a long period. The best defense is to support your bones early with calcium and vitamin D. And if you like more detail on steroids and their side effects, I've covered it fully in another video. You'll find this in this link below. 
So aim for two to three servings of calcium rich foods daily and the practical foods that work well in the flare are lactose free milk, fortified plants milk like almonds or smooth yogurts. These are gentler and easier to digest and help to protect the bone health at the same time catching two rabbits with one stone. Another question my patient commonly asks is, so what foods should you avoid if you're going through a flare? I think the main culprits are things like high fiber or rough food, raw vegetables and salad leaves, especially things like popcorn, and sometimes whole nuts and seeds should be avoided when you're going through the flares. You should really avoid the spice food, which is another common trigger. Fried or greasy food and heavy cream sauces and red or the processed meats especially can all worsen the symptoms. The oranges are too acidic sometimes, as well as carbonated drinks. This may increase the gas and bloating symptoms worse. And importantly, alcohol and coffee often makes the urgency and diarrhea symptoms worse. So I tell my patient to avoid this while going through the flares. And remember, most of these restrictions are temporary. You can usually bring foods back once the flare has settled. So what are the practical meal templates? As an example, you can start today. A simple way to think about is what I call a gentle plate. So a half of your plate is a soft starch, such as a white rice or mashed potato without a skin or refined pasta. And you can give a quarter of your plate with tender proteins like poached chicken, baked fish or tofu or eggs. And the final quarter, it can be formed of well-cooked vegetables such as carrots, zucchinis or pumpkin. And if you want, add the tolerated fruits like banana, apple sauce or canned peaches. If your appetite is really low, I suggest trying a smoothie as well. This can really help. Make sure to use lactose-free milk and mix it with half a banana, for example, and two to three tablespoons of lactose-free yogurt and a spoonful of peanut butter and blend it with water or ice to thin it. This gives you calories and protein and hydration in a form that is easier to tolerate. So can we change or troubleshoot the foods by symptom? So here are a few quick adjustments depending on your symptoms. For example, if you're dealing with the gas and bloating, I'll suggest peeling and cook your vegetables thoroughly and eat smaller portions and avoid fizzy drinks and especially sugar-free gums as well. If urgency or diarrhea is a main problem, stick with low residue carbohydrates, use oral rehydration drinks like hydrolytes and pause caffeine and alcohol intake. If your appetite is low or you're losing weight, eat every two to three hours, add calorie boosters like olive oil, avocado or nut butter and use smoothies between the meals. If you have stricture in Crohn's disease or obstructive symptoms, such as nausea or vomiting, keep your food very soft, avoid the skins and seeds, and make sure you get tailored advice from your dietitian and healthcare team. Fiber supplements such as psyllium husk or benefiber are not usually recommended if you have strictures or severe flares, so make sure to avoid those. One important warning, don't jump into extreme or restrictive diet you find online unless your doctor or dietitian is guiding you. This is important because over restriction, especially when you're going through flares, you're losing a lot of energy and can cause severe deficiencies or malnutrition or even disordered eating pattern, all of which makes inflammatory bowel disease a lot harder to manage. So what are the lifestyle levers that really help in these situations? A few other small things can make a difference. Make sure you prioritize sleep. Sleep is actually really important. There has been several studies suggesting disordered sleeping pattern can exacerbate the inflammatory bowel disease flare. Make sure you do gentle exercise like walking or yoga to help reduce stress, which can trigger the flares as well. And again, there was a study published not too long ago demonstrating the impact of doing regular exercise in reducing the risk of flares. Remember, not every food will affect everyone in the same way. It's all about finding your safe options and individualizing your care. So in summary, here's the plan for the flare days. So firstly, stick to the gentle carbohydrate as we talked about, have the protein at each meal, and make sure to stay hydrated, use light fats, and reintroduce food gradually as you recover. Save this video so can you can come back whenever you want. And if you'd like to go further, watch my video on exclusive enteral nutrition, which explains how a liquid diet can calm the Crohn's disease, and also another video on steroid side effects, which covers the risk and what to watch out for, and the practical guide to manage it. And I've also provided a link for my full European Crohn's Colitis Organization guideline on the diet in inflammatory bowel disease, which breaks down the latest evidence on the diet in inflammatory bowel disease. So share this with your family and so that they know what to do and what to prepare during your flares. The links are in the description below. Thank you very much everyone for your time. I really, really appreciate it. I really hope that this video was valuable to you and have a lovely day. Bye.